Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today, what a journey it is. In fact, I think it's 20 plus years we're going back and in up to today. Today, we are visiting with my dear friend, and everybody that follows knows I only talk to dear friends, but my dear friend, Melinda Gong. Now, Melinda is over on Maui, and we came together in the year 2000, I think it was, something like that. And that moment began the Martin Luther King Peace Poem Project. And every year, from all of the schools, all across the state of Hawaii, thousands of kids write poetry. And then every year, on every island, there is an award ceremony for those kids on that island. So, Melinda, there you are. Yes, I am. Welcome, 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 Melinda. It's so great to see you. Hello, Marsha. Hello, everyone in television land. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that's um, the tell us about the piece, po the original piece poem that we all signed on and sent off to the UN. Tell us about that one. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Marsha, um, in the year about 1994, a group of poets formed together on Maui and we began reading together and formed the Maui Live Poetry Society. And one of our members, Frank Rich, came up with the idea of creating the world's longest poem. And I said, we have to make it about something everyone wants, everyone needs. So we decided to create the world's longest poem on peace. We began this in 1996 with the goal of asking everyone worldwide, and I ask everyone out there worldwide right now to send a poem on peace to us. It doesn't have to rhyme. It can be in the language of your choice. And basically, we ask that you express your ideas on peace. Send it to peacepoem.org, and we will include your peace poem with the world's largest poem on peace. What we did was we had a mission. We decided we create the world's longest poem and we wanted to present it to the United Nations in the year 2000. So we worked, we worked and we worked and we began with a beautiful ceremony in Lahaina under the banyan tree. Uh, the mayor at that time, Mayor Linda Lingle uh, sent her words of peace and we had a ceremony and we began though with the youngest person there a child, six years old, because we wanted the truth and the innocence of childhood about peace. And little Libby Barker from Florida, six years old, wrote the first lines on the peace poem. And uh, since that time, we worked very hard and we worked with the United Nations. And then we decided in 1999 to involve the schools and to involve the children. So we invited every school statewide the first year um, was to send the invitations out. And then in the year 2000, we had our very first awards for the children that participated in the Dr. King Peace Poetry Contest. All of those poems that we receive from the children yearly are included in our beautiful international peace poem. And so, Every year we have continued to work with every school and ask all the teachers to send us poems on peace. Um, and then we choose winners from every class. So every child has a good chance of winning. And those children receive a certificate from the mayor of their island and they receive a prize from the International Peace Poem Project. Um, and then we select top winners who receive very special prizes that are awarded by uh, different artists statewide. I want to draw your attention to this photo behind me. This was our prize in the year 2000. This was a photo presented to us by the Polynesian Voyaging Society on their um, worldwide voyage for peace. And at this time, the Hokulea 
was voyaging through Micronesia when this photo was taken. And so this was selected as our prize. Now, also this year was a year of social justice. And we thought very carefully about what quote to include from Dr. King. Um, and may I remind you, Dr. King was a reverend first and then was drawn to work for the greater good of civil rights, I think. But what we chose, I'm just gonna bring this down and read it to you, is this quote, which he um, delivered December, 1963 at a speech at a church. I, and he wrote, no, no, we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. So this was our prize and it was sent out to all of our winners this year. This year we had 2,033 students enter statewide and we selected winners from each class. So we had 285 winners statewide. And um, that's not unusual for us. No. Every year we receive a, it's been and about, year, got up to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And the then first year, the very first year, the uh, first year. here in Honolulu and Melinda said, well, we've got these children. What about the awards? Who's going to do that? And she's, done. and I said, the mayor. She said, the mayor? <gasps> really? I said, oh, yes, the mayor. So Jeremy Harris was the mayor. And we had um, all these little, and he blocked out 15 minutes of his schedule to <laughs> invite them up to his office. And we had a 300 plus people, mothers, fathers, grandparents, cameras, everybody showed up. The whole hall was full. And the, it spent the rest of the afternoon. He met every child, shook every hand, posed for every family. And it was an absolute success. And after that, he's, the next year, he said, we're going downstairs, which was the courtyard. He said, <laughs> and that has been, that was the same, that was our guiding light. After that, after that year, every mayor, on every island, came out to meet the children to give out the awards. And the one that we have today, the picture we have, that's it. That one is kind of special because that is Mayor Billy Canoy giving the award, the grand prize to, is his name Brooke? I think it was Brooke, what, what was it? Yes, yes. Brooke. Yeah, wonderful. Well, so that was very special because Billy was sick and he said to his office, because they all the office was wonderful to us. And in fact, until this year, they're still doing it, even though he's no longer mayor. And he said he wouldn't be there. And I told Melinda, call the office back, tell him Marcia said, be there. <laughs> And so sure enough, he showed up, still this, and he kind of eased in, and I asked him to come up on the stage. That's the picture you saw. And um, the audience stood and cheered and just loved him like you've never seen anything. And it was, that's why that was so special, you, to see all those parents, just such love, such love. And he whispered to me and he said, I needed that. But as we know that he had this horrible cancer, he had bone marrow transplants, all kind of things. And he managed to, to stay until just what it was last week, week before last, something like that. But it was, he was, it was such a special moment. And that's why I really wanted to talk about that, how special that was, not only for Brooke, but for all of us, everybody that was in that room, that moment, and all of those, if you just go to Billy Kanoe, you will see how many times he quoted Martin Luther King in all of his speeches. 
how often. And the one, the prize he got that year, uh, had Martin Luther King quote on it, and it was about, we have all come here on different boats, but now we're all in the same boat. boat. And that was such a special moment. But then all of them have been special. All every year after year after year. Melinda, tell us about the one on Molokai. That oh my goodness. Molokai is um, a, a delightful island. It's, it's very small and part of Maui County. And for some years we had been successful in bringing students to us from Molokai on the ferry, but now those things have been discontinued. So we go to Molokai now and we took Marsha with us the first year and we were able to um, honor the children there. The wonderful thing about a marvelous teacher there, Greta Martinez is very, very gifted. And she has managed to have these children write in Hawaiian poetry with an English translation, which we have been really seeking and supporting and asking for all these many years because, uh, you know, in the, con in the convention, the CONCON -con, as you call it, Marsha? Yeah. Some years ago. Yeah, CONCON, -con, yeah. The um, language of the Hawaiians was said to be, you know, part of our constitution, just with English. So we seek the Hawaiian language. We see the Hawaiian immersion program growing and changing. And um, I've been a guest now in classrooms where the students truly are speaking almost literally all the time in Hawaiian. And well, as I was explaining poetry, the teacher had to walk in and explain a metaphor in Hawaiian to the children. So um, well, this, this darling this little boy and yeah. on Molokai, but big as a moment, darling little boy he read his poem in hawaiian very well but then melinda asked him to tell us in english and he couldn't do that his mother had to help him with the english i thought that was so precious <laughs> just absolutely but it, precious. but it shows it shows yes. the uh the return of the language the return of the understanding of the importance and for us to promote um the Hawaiian language and poetry is so important because I think poetry is really the essence of a language. When we begin to talk with our dreams, with our heart, and look to what we want and hope to be, it's poetry. So to have that in Hawaiian means that the Hawaiian people here have got their soul back. Well, he, like I said, this little kid was just precious. His Hawaiian was perfect. You could hear it. You could hear the flow in it and everything. But then when he tried the English and his mother <laughs> rescued him, of course, but that was such a precious moment. Yes, and we, we look forward to returning to Molokai and to all the islands and, and to a, a better life once we are able to master this, this pandemic. But um, this year we're, we're continuing the contest again. We want all the teachers to send us their poems uh, statewide, and we will send you your winners. We'll choose winners from every island. And um, you can go to our website, peacepoem.org. And if you need help with lesson plans, please contact me. I'm available at all times. And we really hope this year, more importantly than ever, the children will have a chance to write poetry. This is a, a big year for children to have recognition and to feel that what they have to say is important. And it is important in ways that I never dreamed we would, it would have. Um, one young lady, I see her mother fairly regular. And she's, this young lady was in, pre, in middle school. And now she graduated from college and she's teaching. But her, that was one of those things her mother said that they put on her application for the university was the Peace Poem Project, uh, the winner of the Peace Poem. And she said that made all the difference in the world. And I have met people over the years that tell me, oh, my child did this. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. How much it has meant, not only to the child, but to the family and 
as they have moved through the university, it has meant so much to so many people. I think, Marcia, what you have said to me a number of times at our awards is to remember that sometimes this may be the only child, I'm sorry, the only time that that individual child will receive special recognition. And um, as you say, you, you walked into a home somewhere and they had one of our prizes on the wall because um, the children were winners. I went into a tiny little restaurant here in Maui about four years ago with one of my poets and uh, there was a little boy serving us. It sometimes happened, it was, a, it was an Asian restaurant and this little boy came and he was only in about third grade and he recognized me and he had been one of our winners. And I said, oh, oh, do you still have our prize? And he said, wait, he ran from the table. And most, many people, as you know, they, they live above the restaurant. He was back in less than five minutes with his prize and his certificate. I think he probably had him right next to his bed. But <laughs> I mean, it meant, it meant so much to him that it was there. And for me to, to see what it meant to him was a great reinforcement of, of what we do, Marsha. Well, and one of the big things here on Oahu are the children and family that make the trip from the Waianae coast all the way down to Honolulu Holly to receive the award. And that's such a long trip. And it just means so much to their families and to see that this child, because, you know, most people, I don't know what about on Maui, but here, most people don't pay attention to the children out on the Waianae coast. And so this is really something very special. Like yeah. I said, this is the yeah. one time, maybe, maybe it doesn't happen often. Well, yes, it does. There's one young lady that comes from the Waianae coast. She's been coming every year since she was a top. Yeah. And there are some of those. Yes. And yeah. that is the other part is that we, we're there not only to encourage and find honor and respect and a continuation of the values and, and the beliefs of Dr. King, but also for the poetry, for the poetry. And we had a little boy on Maui. <laughs> it was his third time at the awards. He was in third grade. Well, what about the one that was in he kindergarten had been there. He had been that won every year? He had been there every year, kindergarten, every year. first yeah. and second, and he was in third grade. So we had found him. He was a true poet. And the other thing is that our poets um, are chosen, our winners are chosen by a board of Maui poets every year, and they're different every year. And if you even know the school or the, you know, you, you can't work on that folder, somebody else does. So this little boy kept emerging, which means he's a true poet. The judges kept finding him, different judges every year. So we have given these children a springboard, um, a recognition and a sense of, of their own destiny, perhaps, that they will grow up to become a writer, a great poet. A, you know, I believe that, that Hawaii has this history and that we are evolving into uh, that literary component that reflects the Hawaiian way of life. And that is really reflected in the poetry that we receive. Dolphins and fishing and the beauty and the wonder of life here and how wonderful the Hawaiian way of life is in terms of equality within the system and all of these children loving each other, no matter the color of their skin. Well, I think it was Molokai, maybe, yeah, Molokai, where the children not only wrote the poems, but they illustrated the poems. Was that Molokai? Uh, yes, uh, we received some marvels from all the islands, but Molokai particularly. Uh, in fact, I'll step away and come back oh. with one. I will show you because I have them right here. I was on the bus one day and this lady came up to me and she said, are you Marcia? I said, yes. She said, I saw you. My daughter did. And she went on and on to tell me the whole bus ride about her child winning the award and how proud she was of her child and how she's grown 
and it's always amazing to see here all of these award winners and the little ones, the big ones, and how pleased, how proud they are that they have written their poems and then they get to read them at the award ceremony. They get to read their poems. There we are. That's Molokai, yes. Yes. Peace is. And then this one is not in Hawaiian. Uh, quite often they are, but it'll give you an, an indication of the type of work that uh, these kindergartners do. Now, this is from Greta Martinez's class in, in Molokai at the Kuala Pu'u Pacific Charter School. And she does remarkable work, remarkable work. She's been our teacher of the year. I do want to add that we do choose also a, a teacher of the year for each island. And they receive a certificate from the governor of recognition for teaching excellence. We're very proud of working with governor's office. Um, he also uh, honors our top winners with special certificates as well. And I, and we, we, we are fortunate to receive some wonderful gifts. Now this, for instance, is just a photo image of the lithograph that uh, was sent to our first place winner that we had displayed a little while ago. Uh, the lithograph is um, signed by the artist and it's from Dick Sargent's uh, Fine Arts in Lahaina. And it will be something that she can keep forever or if she has to, she can sell it for a semester and get to college <laughs> when she grows up. <laughs> well, so we, now tell me, uh, going into this year, uh, when we're still out of school, you know, how is it? How are the teachers going to um, do the poems with the with the children that are on Zoom and not in the classroom? How is that going to work? Well, I think that the students are sending work to their to their teachers, mm -hmm. certainly. So the teachers can um, print out the poems and just put them in an envelope and either mail them to me. And we have sent uh, invitations to every school statewide, um, or they can just email them to me, whichever way they would like. But uh, we've been receiving, we've already received, we've gotten four schools so far already. And we're going till the middle of March. Um, so it's, it's very simple. Most of our teachers, and I say our teachers, because we have many, many returning teachers, but we always hope for new ones every year and returning ones to ask other teachers to join them in the project. And uh, email your poems to Maui at poem at Maui.net. Um, they can just contact me through peacepoem.org and they can get further, any questions, I'm happy to help. Also here on Maui, I'm available to go out and, and work with teachers in the schools. And I've done that in the past to to help present a, a poetry lesson. I, I'm a retired teacher and I, I love teaching poetry. <laughs> so that's how. Send me your poems, put them in an envelope and mail them to Post Office Box 102 in Lahaina or email them to poem at maui.net. So you have invited all of the teachers statewide? Already done it. Yeah. Yep. I, what I do is I um, actually I get uh, uh, the emails from the Department of Education, and I email every principal in the state, which is what I've done this year. And um, then I personally email all of our former teachers to invite them to contribute again, to, to send us poetry. I, I think it's a marvelous, marvelous project. I think that many teachers enjoy it because they get to really spend time on civic ideas. And in teaching, in the classroom, it's so important to bring out ideas of what liberty is, what justice and equality is really all about. And the children explore those ideas. And poetry is such a great vessel of exploration um, that you, you, you are continually surprised as a teacher at what your children can do. And quite honestly, the surprise goes all the way up. Now, I will tell you a story and I won't mention any names, but this is a true story. And this happened early in the contest. We had chosen a child and she was a grandchild, 
grand prize winner for Oahu. And I got a call from the principal and said, oh, no, 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 this, this can't be right. And I said, oh, no, this is the child that, oh, but this child is, evidently this child was not a star student. <laughs> and she was not on everybody's list to succeed. And I think for some reason, it surprised the principal that this particular student was a winner. But I said, no, no, this child is, you know, this was no accident. She's our grand prize winner. And she was, she wrote a wonderful poem. And this was around the year 2000. And she said, oh, it makes me weak. She said, Manhattan is awash in tears. Oh, I've never forgotten that line. <laughs> I, I still remember that poem, you know? So it's, it's just so interesting how mm, we still have to work. We still have so much work to do to, to accept our own children and to believe in them always. And then year after, well, this, of course, last year, we did not have the wonderful celebration. Mm. And, but now, we sh hopefully we will this year, hopefully. And well, we, last, last we year have a new mayor here yes. on Oahu. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we, but all of the mayors since 2000, Every mayor since Jeremy have all participated. Uh, the one year we didn't have a mayor participate, but we did have Doug Chin. He was the, the was it managing director or? Yes, yes. Yeah. He sang with the children. He had oh. the best time. Oh my goodness, you've never seen anything. Yes. And Mufi, oh my goodness. Mufi, you know how tall he is. And the Luffy. little kids, and the movie was in every picture with the children. All of oh, I every year the mayors every have year. always had such a good time. They've always honored us with their help, and we're so delighted that they do. And we hope that uh, this year will be the best year yet. Yes. Yes. Well, listen, we are out of time, but that was wonderful. The time went so fast, and Melinda. And where's Gary? He's in the back room. Oh, okay. We met Gary the first year. I think it was the first year. And he had his camera and he was writing about us because nobody else did. <laughs> None of the others. <laughs> and it was, um, that's how we met Gary. And now you're married to Gary. So tell Gary. Thank you for all the years and all the love. And now, thank you and aloha. Aloha. It's been a pleasure. Poetry. <laughs>